This is the Democratic presidential candidate's reaction to Trump's peace plan. Most of them are having the same line, Barry. And it seems to be a, a line that has been approved by the DNC. And this line is the unilateral annexation of settlements is wrong way to go. Why are they hopping on this? You know, I hate Jew bandwagon, even though we kind of know the answer. It really saddens me as an American, as someone who understands Israel, and on a secondary basis as someone who is Jewish, because it makes no sense. The Jews that live in those settlements live on land that was bought, literally bought with deeds. They didn't go in with bulldozers and knock down Palestinian uh, villages and build settlements on top of it. If you've been on the West Bank, I've been all over it. I literally have. There's a lot of vacant land there. And so if someone moves in and buys a vacant parcel of land and builds a couple houses on it, it becomes a settlement doesn't mean anyone's dispossessed. Keep in mind, it has never been part of a country. Before 1948, it was part of Great Britain, which was managing the Middle East. And before World War I, it was part of Turkey that was managing the Middle East. And when Turkey lost World War I, Britain took it over. And after Britain left in 1948, it was supposed to be part of the Jewish state, except they got invaded and the Jordanian army seized it. Well, most of the Jordanian tribes are Palestinian-ish, and so they decided that's where their land should be and that's where their country should be, even though there has never been a country there. So I want to correct something very strongly and emphatically for your listeners. Occupation means you take over another country's sovereign, internationally recognized territory against the will of the occupants, and you forcefully either dispossess them of their rights or their land or both. Look it up. That's what it means. Israel occupied territory because it wasn't owned by, governed by, or part of a country ever. Jordan occupied it in 1948 because their army was bigger than the Israeli army on the West Bank. That's how they got control of Jerusalem. And what did they do to the holiest site in the world for Jews? The Western Wall at the basis of the Temple Mount? They made it a garbage dump. And they dumped trash and human waste and animal waste to defile it. And the Jews cleaned it out and scrubbed it and blessed it and mm -hmm. prayed over it until it was ready for a human being to stand on it. I've been to that wall a number of times, as has President Trump. Thank you, President Trump, for praying there. It is considered to be the holiest place on planet Earth because Abraham and Isaac were on top of it. It is where King David was. It is where Solomon was. It is where Jesus was. It is the holiest place on planet Earth. And for some reason, the Arabs don't consider Christians and Jews as being authorized to be there because they want the territory. It's about land. It's not about religion. And it's certainly not, a, not about title to the land. You know, many years ago, I was on the Temple Mount, and I went into the Dome of the Rock. That's the temple, the Muslim temple that was built up there. And I had a tour guide who was Muslim, but he spoke English, fortunately. And he took me to the holiest site there, inside the mosque, and he said, I want you to put your hand in there. I don't think I've ever told this in public, so this is a surprise story, and I don't know if it's still accurate, but I remember it very well. I was with the founder of the Israeli Air Force, who at the time was a very close friend. He's since passed away, a great hero of Israel and America. He was a highly decorated American war veteran who volunteered and became the founder of the Air Force. And he took me there, and this Muslim guy, who was very nice, 
said, I want to take you to a very special place. So he led me to this spot in the middle of the mosque, and he said, put your hand in this hole. And it was a hole in a box, and I put my hand in. He said, do you feel that? I said, yeah. He said, do you know what that is? And I said, well, uh, it feels like steel wool, which is what it felt like to me, you know, kind of bristly. And he said, no, that is Muhammad's beard. Oh. And I looked at him and I said, you mean Muhammad that started Islam? And he said, yes. That's why this place is so sacred. And I said, um, but Muhammad was never here. He died in a battle in Saudi Arabia. He was killed by the opposition to his religion. Well, he came here in a dream on his white stallion, oh, and he left his beard here, and he went to heaven, and we preserved the beard. Now, obviously, it's a goofy story. I heard it, so I'm not imagining this. I was an adult. It was not that many years ago, and I remember the story vividly. But these stories get passed down, and then somehow they become reasons to kill all the Jews and the Christians because Muhammad was there. Even though in the Quran, Jerusalem and the importance of Jerusalem was never mentioned. Other than kill the Jews, kill the Christians, kill the infidels, kill all the non believers, and the most important people to kill are the people that were followers of Muhammad and decided to leave. Kill them first. So this murderous ins insistence on killing non-believers 1,600 years ago is still there. Only now there's a lot more people. And in the case of Iran, well, they have long-range missiles. And in the case of certain Palestinians in Gaza, they have short-range missiles and firebombs and kite bombs and suicide vests. And it's a cult of death and a cult of violence with the intention to destroy you and me. And if you don't believe me, I will tell you and your visitors to do something that I always ask when I make public speeches. Please, please, please do me and Jermaine a favor. Buy a Quran. You can get a good English translation on Amazon. Read it. It'll take you a couple of days. And you will know why they want to kill you. Because the instruction is to kill you. And the instruction is to kill all the Jews in Israel. And there's hundreds of passages in the Quran instructing them to do that. And don't let anyone tell you that the Quran has changed because it's against the law to change one word. Not a paragraph, not a sentence, not a comma. You're all targets. The question is whether or not something will happen to you. So that's why they can't accept the plan, Jermaine because it's contrary to Islam. And I don't know what to do about that. It's the informed, moderate, normal people, and I say normal in the sense of, well, I'd rather have a good life for my family than go kill everybody and die doing it. Those people will accept the peace plan. And if Saudi Arabia and Egypt and Jordan and Lebanon and United Arab Emirates endorse it, well, it might just happen. Trump has done a great thing. The question is whether or not there will be enough support to implement it. I pray it will, because if it doesn't, we may never have a president again with the chutzpah, with the cojones, to step up and tell the truth about the situation on the ground. Because I got news for you. If Bernie Sanders is president, he said he wants to take the money that goes to Israel for defense cooperation and give it to the Palestinians and give it to Hamas. And if you don't think they'll spend that on weaponry and suicide bombs and missiles and kite bombs, then you haven't been watching the news because that's exactly what will happen. 